good evening from <coughs> Chamanak Hill, Katia Jean Pien. Um, evening, Sunday evening here. And uh, yesterday was that 12 mile, 12 kilometer walk that I did. And kind of taking it easy today. Sitting down reading. Walk to the convenience mart once. It's about a kilometer. So now it's uh, 17:30, and I'm headed to Mike's Mexican Food to meet up with some expat friends. Um, and it's uh, 1.7 kilometers away, about a 20-minute or so walk. So I'm walking it, and. Uh, then it'll be kind of night time when I come back, so maybe I'll have an opportunity to, to shoot some stuff and take a different route, do some stuff in a little bit different way. All right. All right, there's some uh, mild bar scene. I don't know what is uh, behind the doors at Saloon bar high five with the with the softies that the western world is producing now the softies and whiners and complainers oh it's so hard and I don't get paid enough well okay but don't complain to me when uh when shit happens over, you know, years and years, and uh, the world just moves in a different direction. All right. So this is the main drag in and out of Jomtien area. So I just cut up that road there. COVID then, and uh, tourists still weren't coming in, and so they, I came here, they had kind of a skeleton staff, and um, menu didn't look good. I don't even remember what I have. I had, I wasn't impressed. So my friend Doug, last Sunday, 
I, had, I was storing my stuff while I found a place in one of the empty units he owns. And uh, he, uh, and I said, hey, I got my place. Can you, can we use your car and move it over? He said, yeah, sure, because I'm going, I go every Sunday to meet my friends at Mike's Mexican. You want to come along after we put your stuff in? I said, yeah, sure. Oh, yeah, I don't like the place, but I'll go. And uh, so, long story short, I came uh, last Sunday and I had the wet uh, shredded beef burrito and I couldn't fucking believe how good it was. So when he called me this afternoon, he said, hey, we just got back from Kochang. Do you want to, um, you want to uh, come over again? I said, absolutely. So uh, I think they just got, uh oh, there they are right there. How was ya? Um, all right, let me turn this off. Well, I had an excellent meal and and uh, at uh, Mike's Mexican, I had the shredded beef wet burrito. with, you know, standard beans, rice, and uh, a side of pickled jalapeno um, peppers. Hard to get fresh here. Up in Chiang Mai, where I lived initially, you could get fresh jalapenos. But uh, everywhere else, you, you're limited at the can, pretty much, unless you, you know, know someone who knows someone and they can ship them to you. But uh, anyway, it was five Americans. Which is pretty unusual, uh, you know, we're a distinct minority in Thailand, Americans, you know. <coughs> um, it's far away, you know. You find a lot of Americans in uh, expats in the Philippines, but that's because of the Clark Air Force Base and Subic Navy Base and QB Air Station. So, uh, but anyway, all right, so I decided to, decided to extend my walk and I'm uh, do, extending for a few kilometers, doing a big loop and uh, gonna catch some nightlife areas along the way, the big roundabout way home. You may have heard about his walking street and all of its go-go bars and all of that stuff, but there is the Jom Tien walking street called Super Town, and it is uh, the opposite. It is uh, young Thai males, and so uh, it's uh, just the reverse, except. Uh, it ain't women going down there for the entertainment. Uh, I wouldn't advise walking through it if you uh, have eaten recently, recently, which is the case for me. Right? When I was waiting for my room, uh, I ended up, ended up uh, <coughs> staying not far from here in a hotel. and. Uh, there's a lot of propositioning. I, I don't mind it among with the lady boys, it's kind of funny, but the gay males, yes. Anyway, teach their own, but ain't for me. So here is the uh, main street down that goes to Jump Tin Beach. And uh, to the left, and like I've said before, John Tien is a long ass beach. I'll have to measure it. It's got to be at least 20 kilometers long. It goes and goes and goes and goes as far as the eye can see. So here you have lots of massage parlors, but the mix, the difference here is that some of them are manned by young men and not young women. To reference my previous segment here. So you kind of, uh, kind of a, see, 
you never quite know what establishment is catering to what here, right? So I play it safe and only go to a couple different places that I know are for guys like me. I, so, what's funny is that the Thai male, when you walk by and get their greeting, they will say hello in a falsetto voice. In fact, the other day I heard one of them talking, because it was a ladyboy actually, not a male, but a ladyboy. And I could tell because I could hear, hear uh, cross-dresser. See, here's the other end of that uh, place. So I can hear the cross-dresser um, speaking, which I knew it was a lady, but when I walked back, okay, I just did a she, that's what they like, he, she, whatever, uh, <laughs> said hi to me in a totally falsetto voice. So that's what I'm talking about. There's just, there's like pockets of stuff here in the John Pian area. It's not like in Patia where it goes for blocks and blocks and every single place in the establishment, right? So there you gotta go to the bar. Here's a place I used to go to, Country Road. That's a heterosexual establishment as well as the place next door. Uh, this one, and I used to love sitting in the corner right there. Another place here. This is a lounge that I like. Kit Kat, jump to you. Stop in there, have a refreshment. Okay, I am refreshed. Now headed back home. Get my camera up here. Walk down the beach. Bong, bong. To the left is Zhang Tian. To the right is Dong Pong. I need to go to the right. So. Escobar. <laughs> Clever name. Good restaurant. I, the hotel I stayed at the night before I moved in is at EDN right down there. Pretty nice room, but this, the food's really good in there. Ate a couple times there. Good food, good price. And this is Donton Katea Beach. Dong Pai. Uh, 
not a, not an uncommon sight seeing guys in their 60s who are out and fit, get lots of sun, get lots of activity. Is a 60 year 60 something year old guy skateboarding at eight o'clock at night like uh, teenagers do in the States. Not sitting in front of the TV and a lazy boy stuffing his face watching stupid shit on TV. There you go. Told you, I can rant about everything. Anything and everything. All it takes to make a radical change in your entire life like that is to just fucking say, I'm gonna do it. And then you say, okay, to make it happen, I gotta do, here's step one, step two, step three, step four, step five, da da da. How do you eat an elephant? One bite at a time. That's how you do it. So. Or you know, <laughs> elephant in Thai is Chang. And a brand of beer is Chang. So you could say, how do you drink a Chang? And usually it's the big bottles. The pint saw. I think they're even more than a pint. But uh, one sip at a time. I wonder if someone would get the reference there. Okay, probably about two kilometers. Straight line walk, then a right turn and another kilometer up to the home. So in total, it'll come out to somewhere between six and seven, I think. Not for sure, but I'll calculate it when I get back. I don't have my tracker on. I could uh, say right now I'm headed back to uh, finish up my Nikolai Sunday scribbles. I'm only about a third of the way through it. I just started, before I had to go meet those dudes, I just started uh, the section on the uh, section called January 6th Bullshit. And unless you're living under a rock, you're aware of the um, revelations from Tucker Carlson this week, where is the, the Speaker of the House, who, well, that turned out to be a, a serendipitous thing. The guy has balls, you know? Um, a lot of people didn't want him because they thought he was a compromiser, like, uh, you know, the likes of what's-his-face, that shit stain, um, you know, minority leader in the Senate, Mitch McConnell. God, fucking, you, you want to pound his face just looking at the fucker. So anyway, um, the uh, the um, it's just unbelievable. And the uh, by the way, I'll I'll add this in the post, but. Uh, Amazing column by Naomi Wolf, a lefty, basically an apology and the, uh, an apology of the sort, sort that leaves no stone unturned, no fucking excuses, no, you know, no amnesty, no nothing. Apologizing to conservatives, right? And saying not only this, but saying how. She's been duped on every fucking thing and she goes down to the list. It's unbelievable, right? And when someone that with that kind of, of prominence uh, flips, yeah, yeah. You know, this whole, well, you know, the, 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 it, what it comes down to is the woke and left and elite got so hyper, confident in themselves and there they surrounded themselves with Trump haters right 
and they figured they figured that Trump made the time ripe to do their big take over the world thing. They and it's not biting off more than you can chew isn't even correct. It's the most fucking stupid political bolt maneuvering that is ever it'll go down in history as the biggest laughing stock political move maneuvering of all times because it's just being exposed right and left and you know you know that they're fucked and that they know they're fucked by you know the day Tucker Carlson comes out shows actual video footage and the reaction from Schumer and McConnell and then a big, uh, probably about, what, eight or 10 other Republicans who are all shit stains, right? Including a guy I thought was fairly decent, uh, Dan Crenshaw, you know, the one-eyed dude, uh, former military and all that. Fuck him too. Um, you know, they're outraged about the shit. And when you, you know, when you look at this and you see why are the Republicans saying this is bad to show the American footage, video footage that was withheld and never shown before during all this January 6th show trial and everything, during putting that guy in jail for four years. You know, what's his name? QAnon, the, you know, the, the guy that they made the whole thing about. Turns out, he was nothing. He was being escorted around by Capitol Police, up to nine of them. <laughs> it's right there. And you can be upset about that and keep the guy in jail? As it, and now, now that makes him a political prisoner. Every second he's there, he's there as a political prisoner. It's clear as day. So, uh, you know, anyway, uh, read the post. That's just kind of a, of a outline of it. It's dark, so you can't see much, but on the other side of that fence is Papia Water Park. And uh, that place has been around since the 80s. I used to go there, friends and I used to go there. You would take your girlfriend of uh, your vacation or visit girlfriend over there in the afternoon. And they have all the slides and the pool and all that stuff. Talking, uh, you know, 35, 36 years ago. And it's still there. We we went there uh, a couple years ago when the family from east from the village and I came down here for a week, a holiday weekend. So, but <laughs> the thing is, back then, it was out in the middle of nowhere. It was just the beach and nothing around it palm trees and shit. Now there's condos and buildings all over, you know. It's kind of amazing to be back here after all those years having no plan to do so. It just happened that way. You know, all I did was sell everything and, and uh, move out of the U.S. I had, I sold everything. I have like two boxes of keeps, you know, photos and a few things in my brother's garage. I had a 60 liter backpack, and a 30 liter backpack, with, which was my gear bag and a few books and money in the bank. And, uh, and I stepped on a plane and I end up here, you know, never really intending that. I had intended to be nomadic and then COVID happened and I ended up with a girlfriend and she's got two daughters that I adore more than my own life. I know it's easy to say, 
so I kind of understand saying it because I hear other people say it, right? It's like really, it really clarifies something when you see these two people. And if they were, if they were little assholes, I wouldn't. But I told everybody before, I've known these girls for three years, they've never said one cross word to me. Not either of them, not ever. Nothing but respect and gratitude. Nothing but, right? Now, given that Chile is 13 and Wasabi turns 12 in two weeks, that critical age, really, right? How could I not just put them as number one priority? Okay, here's the Here's the right turn and the home stretch. That's the upscale 7-Eleven that has a nice patio outside. You can get coffee, drinks, smoothies, and even plates of food, either the pre-prepped stuff or they actually have a hot plate. They cook stuff with omelets and things like that. You know. Yeah, to be a 7-Eleven clerk, you have to be able to make a few things in a pan. And it's, I've had it, it's good and it's inexpensive. You know, it's not eggs in a carton, it's real eggs, you know. Lotus Go Fresh, I go there a lot. It's a little bit pricier than macro. And that's where I get my pork loins and pork tenderloins. And it's like 20 baht a kilo more, you know. That's like, it's like a, like a dollar more, or less than a dollar, 80 cents more. For, it's 40 cents a pound more, and I don't have to go miles on the motorbike. I just walk down. So yeah, this is, uh, this is my neighborhood here. And as I said, I knew it from before. But it's four, maybe three, four kilometers from where I lived before, not several hundred meters, right? So I never came here much, and I don't think ever at night. So I had no idea. You know, there's nightlife there, or at least far closer. Get lots of good, decent uh, chicken and beef kebabs here. Lots of places. They're very good. Cause they're very, they're very meat intensive. You know, it's the, it's the meat and it's a little bit of vegetables. They're un, much unlike a uh, like a Mexican burrito. It's mostly beans and rice, and has a little bit of meat in it. You know much better for you. You know, and I th look, here we go. Another seven already. That's how close they are together. You know, and then you have a big C there. Another, that's a, a big, a mini big C. This is a contradiction in a name, right? So, um, big C is, uh, big C is, it's, it's much like a, uh, a Walmart or a, Target with food and department store all in one. Not sure what's behind the door. Probably I was just in a lounge. They're nice because you can go and it's air conditioned. You're not getting bugs. Sometimes the AC is nice. Sit there, have a cold drink, which is now non happily non alcohol for me I don't ever feel like I'm missing a thing ever honest truth there you ever ever wonder why there's that expression the honest truth 
because there is such thing as the dishonest truth. Yep. You can tell a truth or a fact and use it in a dishonest context or manipulation. So there's honest truth and there's dishonest truth. Think about it. Lawyers are experts at dishonest truths. So there you got it. Doms. I've been here many times. In fact, I had a pizza here the other night. Excellent pizza. Really excellent. Yeah, splice in a picture of it. I didn't snap a picture. there's one more thing I got to show you up here and uh, you've obviously seen many food carts food vendors in these motorcycles with sidecars here's a guy who goes to the bars sells purses and ladies clothes and stuff the bar girls come out and buy stuff really great business entrepreneurship man In my last Sunday, you saw like upwards of 60% of pies are self-employed. You know what the figure is in, in the land of the free America? About 6%. Ties have 10 times as many self-employed entrepreneurs as America does on a percentage basis of population. 10 times. Oh, America. Land of the free, the great America. Well, maybe it used to be. Stick a fork in it. It's done. And given January 6th and the um, reaction from Republicans to Tucker Carlson's revelations, you know now, see, here is the only one I've ever seen that is owned and operated by a foreigner. This is an Italian who owns a pizza joint and he has not a wood fired but a gas fired pizza oven. Pretty amazing. And I live right there. So I haven't had one yet. So uh, but it won't be long. Nor should it be long. Okay. So anyway, just to finish off that thought. As I walk back out, I started up. 
Um, the after seeing the Republican, you know, lead, Republican leaders in the House and Senate condemn Carlson for showing that video, I'm like, that's what really happened to, at Trump 2020. What's, that's what really happened. Yeah, everything else contributed. But what was really driving it fundamentally from the depths of the swamp that he wanted to drain, but ultimately could not, obviously, because it's very deep and very scummy. So you know what happened. Those Republicans happened. Your party. If you ever vote for a Republican again, or vote for Republicans, no matter what they say, you're a fucking fool. You're a fool. You're a chump. You're a fool. Chump, cucked fool, simp, fool. Write that shit off if you have any principles. All right. This is my front door. Okay. Light on. Home sweet home. All right.